along, let me wander. Don't tie my hand, just let me roam. I'm like a bird, just crying for space. Give me a breath and some sweet meadow play. We're going to West Texas to paint pictures. Can we stop in Abilene? No. Please. Okay. Hello, welcome to the Grace. I'm Laura Moore, and I serve as the Executive Director of the Grace Museum. First and foremost, I want to say thank you so much for your wonderful support. We're very thankful for Cassetta for your support of our exhibitions and program. We're so glad that you're visiting us here today, and we're excited to take you up to collections in just a moment, and Judy Deaton is waiting there. But I want to first tell you a little bit about what you're seeing. You'll note this great lobby. This building was built in 1909. It served as a hotel until into the late 70s and then it fell in total disrepair and sat empty for many, many years to the point that you could actually see the sky from the ground floor. When this was refurbished, renovated in the 80s, they identified the original colors and you'll see those are celebrated again today. The Fine Arts Museum began in 1937 at a different location. So when this place was refurbished, they joined forces and the muse museum moved here and now we are the Grace Museum. Well, welcome to the Grace Museum. Uh, I'm Judy Deaton and I'm the curator at the Grace. And we're all excited to do this for Cassetta and share some of our collection, things that people don't usually see because they're hidden away in the vault. And it's partly because we want to do the best for the work of art and also present it and preserve it. So it's a combination of both of those things. So they're not out all the time, but we want you to know what we have. So welcome to the Grace Museum Vault. In 2007, when I came to work at the Grace Museum, I was given the task of researching the collection and documenting it. And it was, it had been collected since 1939. And the, not a lot of research had been done. There was the beginning of it, but putting it all together was a task that uh, took quite some time to accomplish. And we're in wonderful shape now. We have wonderful staff. Um, and we have everything documented. And I thought it would be interesting today. We can take a little walk around and you can see um, how we store things and what we have here. But I thought we'd focus on two particular paintings that early Texas art collectors were really interested in. And I'll tell you a little bit about how they came to the museum and how they inspired a 1989 exhibition called Texas Painters. I would like to say that in the 80 years since things have been collected, art has been collected by the old Abilene Fine Arts Museum and now the Grace Museum, it really became apparent to me while I was working on it doing the research that Texas art was always the focus of what they wanted to um, to do here and what they wanted to exhibit here and what they wanted to collect. So when we decided that our mission is also to be uh, the exhibition and collection of American Art with Texas Connections, that's contemporary as well as historic, it seemed to be the perfect fit to bring our collection in line with our exhibitions. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, the first painting, is a painting by Charles Taylor Bowling. Next. 
It is an oil on panel. And it's beautifully preserved. We've had conservation work done on the painting. Came into the collection in 1947. Um, and it was painted in 1936 by Charles Taylor Bowen. It is an iconic Depression era painting. And some people look at this painting and other early works from the 30s as precursors for Texas regionalism. Painted in 1936, so think about the Great Depression. And what an iconic painting this is, tells the story in Texas of what happened in the Great Depression, what happened to the land, which is often the subject of, of Texas paintings. The wonderful colors of the sky, the sky is clear. The golds, the greens, the things that we would see in a normal Texas landscape but it's also pretty much devoid of plants and trees. One of the interesting things about the painting, of course, is the mailbox. It's in the front, it's open. There is nothing in the mailbox. <laughs> Maybe help is not on the way. <laughs> and if you look at the, tr the car, the Model T, it's a bit small in proportion. So sometimes we would look at realism and we think it, it is hyper-realism, but there are also different things in here that are manipulated to make us think about issues during the Great Depression. I'm gonna turn it around and let the frame, how it's been conserved, I'll try to hold it still. It was exhibited in Nebraska, in several different places. But you can definitely see how it's been conserved and cleaned. Beautiful painting. A bowling I believe, was, uh, if you look at Texas Land, look at the label. Miss Claire Tate. Does it say gift of Miss Claire Tate? She was one of those wonderful volunteers. The staff for the museum was mostly volunteers. She was an artist herself, and she studied at the new, um, in New York at the Art Students League and in Chicago at the Art Institute. And she was very active in the arts across the state as well as taught at McMurray University and members of the women's clubs. And this painting was purchased and gifted to the museum back in the 40s by her. What a treasure it is for us to have this. Um, and she's a wonderful example of people who started the museum and brought wonderful art and artists to the museum. I believe he actually came to the museum and taught several artists that we have in the collection from early Texas, came to Abilene and taught to create a sketch club, which is an early sponsor for the museum and brought artists here and gave them solo shows back in the day. The next painting I thought you would enjoy seeing that also inspired that 1989 exhibit is this painting by E.G. Eisenhower. Country Church of Palo Pinto, oil on canvas, about 1945, and it was a museum purchase. And we do have in our scrapbook and archives a checklist from this exhibit um, that actually shows the prices that this was being offered for. Um, Eisenhower had actually exhibited in Abilene in 1937, and he had also taught in the sketch club classes. So those women were very aware of the art in the state, and they invited the others to come and teach on Saturdays, and they were students of him. He did, uh, Eisenhower did study with Frank Ray, and of course the love of the landscape and those beautiful skies do make us think of Frank Gray. Robert Onderdonk also was one of his teachers. And this is his own personal take on Impressionism. And it is a local subject, 
bright colors on this painting still remain. The brushwork is absolutely beautiful and fresh. Unfortunately, he did mix varnish in with his paints and many of his paintings. And over time, they have yellowed and cannot be cleaned because the varnish is included into the base uh, oil paint and this painting. This particular one um, is brighter in color. The blues, the oranges, that red earth that you find in West Texas is very spot on. And uh, when you look closely, you can actually see that flat blush work uh, on the uh, grass and everything in the foreground, which is uh, really quite extraordinary. Um, we have letters in our, in our archives from Eisenlore thanking Miss A.M. Carpenter and Mrs. Morgan Jones, who are again volunteer staff, for the exhibition, a solo exhibition of his work at the Abilene Museum of Fine Arts, and noting that the subject was appropriate because he was a descendant from a long line of preachers, and that little church in Palo Pinto no longer exists. It pleased him greatly that the painting that he painted of that church in Palo Pinto is staying in West Texas, close to where the place that he painted it back in the 1940s. Part of the joys of working with collections is getting to know the paintings very well, the front, the back, um, all parts of it. Uh, and this, uh, we had it conserved. The information from the back of the painting is included now on the back of this. So you can see the labels and uh, you can see an excerpt from his original exhibition here. There's a short bio about him. Uh, if you look close to the edges, you can see the canvas actually coming over the edges, giving room to breathe. Uh, really, once again, it's a wonderful project to be able to conserve the painting and take care of it. Uh, we've exhibited it several times. It always gets rave reviews. In fact, uh, Michael Guerra once said he thought it was one of the best Eisenlores that he'd seen in a very long time. So we were very pleased to have that confirmation that it really is a treasure in our collection. Um, the exhibition that I mentioned earlier, uh, we, I'll show you a close up of this. This is Painters of Texas, 1989 the Abilene Fine Arts Museum, 1989 was a year, when you think about it, when we really started to get interested in early Texas art. And Bill Cheek uh, organized this exhibition with the help of A.C. Cook, um, Panhandle Plains Museum, and also um, uh, Bruce Shackford and some other people were really interested in showing Texas art. So the two paintings that I just showed you are featured. You can see this one in the little black and white cover. And then we look inside, there's a wonderful piece by Frank Ray. You open it up, you'll see the painting by Bowling. And a full checklist of all of the different artists that you can see were included. And they've turned out to be basically the hallmark of all the wonderful Texas artists that were working at, um, in the state from the early 20s, 30s, and even before. So I think that this is probably a landmark, I would call this a landmark exhibition, happened here in Abilene with, under the auspices of Bill Cheek. Uh, and getting these paintings together, putting on the exhibition, bringing people together to talk about Texas art. And we are so pleased that our paintings were the inspiration of all of this. So get a copy of this if you can, and we'll show some close-ups of it so you can read all of the different resources. One of the resources on the back it says, The History of Texas Artists and Sculptures by Francis Battelle, Fisk, 1928, written in Abilene. So, then those are all resources that we use today when we study Texas art. And I know a lot of the other uh, 
vaults that you're going to visit in mid-size and large museums across the state hold Texas art treasures. We're really excited to share ours with you and we hope we can do it again because we have a lot more we'd like to share. Thank you. Leave me alone, let me wander. Don't tie my hand, just let me roam. Something old is new again. Our love will fly on brand new wings, will glide like bending time. We'll change the view to bright life colors, all but blue.